Hey guys, Blake here with another video and algae is one of those things that is probably top of the list for the most annoying thing about the hobby. It's the reason a lot of us start over with fish tanks, scrap our meticulously put together aquascapes and sometimes even it's the reason a lot of us get out of the hobby. So I've got a product here today that I'm really excited to talk about and that is the Chihiros Doctor. So what we what I want to run through today is actually what is it, what it does, how it works, when to use it, and of course the unboxing and setup. Let's jump straight into the video. Aquarium sterilizers are a somewhat controversial product. Um, there's a lot of debate around what they do, whether they do anything, when to use them, and if you need to use them at all. And I think that's mainly because a lot of people use them in the wrong way. The process of how aquarium sterilizers work is utilizing electrolysis. And the way that this product utilizes electrolysis is by running a current between two um, platinum electrodes, which we'll have a look at later when we unbox it. Doing this basically splits the atoms of H2O or water into hydrogen and oxygen. But also during this process, you create something called a hydroxyl radical. And the theory is that the hydroxyl radical is what is going to be attractive to pollutants uh, that are going to create smells, discolorations and other um, imperfections within the clarity of your water. The second part to how this product is supposed to work is that the actual current on the two surfaces of the doctor are supposed to break down the cell wall of spores within the aquarium. The spores that we are trying to target with this product are spores such as algal spores which create algae, fungal spores which lead to fungal infections and things like that, uh, viruses which can lead to other uh, fish illnesses and also uh, bacterial spores as well. So uh, if you have bacterial blooms and things like that, in theory, this product here that you hear us doctor is supposed to limit that process. It is important to note, and this is why I think these sort of products have a little bit of a bad rap, is that this product is not going to remove algae that's already existing within your aquarium. Since we target spores and basically the before process of that algae creation, that is how it's supposed to limit algae growth, not by actually removing algae that you already have. So it's best done installing this in new tanks that you envisage is gonna have a bit of a rough process getting started. Especially when you use brand new aqua soil and other sort of high nutrient um, soils which do promote plant growth but also can create a really messy start off uh, as a new aquarium. So that's enough talking and enough uh, attempted chemistry, especially from my part. Uh, let's rip in and unbox this and see what you get in the box. Okay, so this is the first time opening this box here. Let's see what we get. To get started with, we have, looks like a little informational slip to say that it was passed by quality control. We have the instructions here. We have the actual, the actual controller. This sits on the outside of your aquarium. That's what it plugs into. Underneath this box here, we have the doctor itself uh, and some Velcro. I don't know if you can actually see what I'm talking about here, but you can see there's actually two layers of this mesh here. This mesh here is actually titanium and platinum or either titanium or platinum. It's very confusing to find accurate information online about these products. What we're gonna want is uh, basically current passing from one to the other. This here will plug into one of these sockets underneath and they are sized differently so it's gonna plug into the one on the left. Moving on we have another connector here. This is gonna go into the AC adapter. We have a fairly good looking uh, suction cup here. And inside this box here, we have the AC adapter. So I'm Australian, if you haven't detected already by my accent, or if you're not familiar with my content. So we have the Australian plug of the Chihiros Doctor. You should be able to know which plug you get by this indicator on the side here, AU plug. There is also a Bluetooth compatible version but I'm just going with the standard version here today. So to set up is quite straightforward and simple. I'm not even gonna bother with the instructions. I think we can just eyeball it here today. So let's just go ahead and go give it a go. 
So we start off with the main control box here, which is gonna have different settings by the looks of it for the size of the aquarium, starting from under 60 liters to going all the way up to 500 to 700 liters. Presumably that's gonna affect how much current goes from the module. So as you can see there, I just plugged the module into the uh, right hand side in, um, inlet there, depending on which side you look from. But they are sized differently. I'll, I'll show you just exactly so. This one here is connected to the module and this one here is for the AC adapter. And as you can see, they are different sized plugs there. So there's no mistaking which, out, which socket to plug these into. So we'll plug the module into the one on the right and the uh, AC adapter um, connection there into the left. And that will simply slot into the other end of the AC adapter. We're pretty much done. Uh, there's only two small other things we want to note. Uh, you've got here a little knob on the end of the module and that is going to go onto your suction cup there and be placed inside your aquarium. And then we have the pieces of Velcro here. So um, I'm just going to attach it directly to the uh, control box. So you can so be aware that there are these little rubber knobs here. So um, that might get in the way of when you actually attach the Velcro. You might want to place something else there just in case like some 3M double sided tape. So there you go. We have everything connected suction cup to the inhibitor, to the control box, to the adapter, straight into the AC adapter, and this is gonna go onto our wall. Some other important points to note for successful operation of this unit is, it's not recommended to use if you have a TDS higher than 500 in your aquarium. I believe this is related to the conductivity of your water, and it will affect also the calcification of the unit itself. So it's best done in lower TDS water because you're gonna have less wear and tear on the unit and the electricity is gonna stay between the two uh, surfaces instead of all throughout your water, which can affect your fish. On that topic, it is uh, plant, shrimp, and fish safe to use a device like this. It's a very low current and uh, you're not gonna have any ill effects. Other than that, it's important to note that you don't need to run it 24 seven. And in fact, uh, an hour per day is plenty, depending on the amount of spores, biological bacteria, and other um, pollutants that you have in your water. Most people get away with sort of an hour here and there, and that's pretty much all that is required. Okay guys, so let's take it over to a new aquarium I've got over there, and uh, let's install this unit. Okay, so here you can see my pretty rough looking uh, aquascape. It's because I've recently actually filled this up and this is a brand new aqua soil in here. So it is fairly discolored. There's some light algae on the walls and um, generally it's just having a transition from immersed grown to submerged grown uh, plants in here. So I think it's a perfect one to try this out on. We'll start by just taking the AC adapter and running it to my power supply. Next is to take the unit and actually install it. So generally what happens is a lot of people install it like you can see there, where it's placed horizontally. However, this is actually not the most efficient way to do this. The best bet is to actually rotate the inhibitor to a vertical position. And although it is a little bit more conspicuous, meaning that it's a bit more obvious that you've got it in the tank, this can do two things. What it does is it stops bubbles pooling underneath the unit there, which lengthens the life of the bottom cylinder. And on top of that, it also uh, lessens any shadows that are gonna be underneath the unit. If you're wondering where it's best placed in the aquarium, the best places are in areas of direct flow, so directly near the inlet or outlet of any filtration. You also wanna place it low within the aquarium to allow the bubbles the longest uh, time within the water column. And other than that, I mean, it's just a good idea to keep it out of the way. I'm putting it at the very front of the aquarium here just for this video, but ordinarily I'd put it in a back corner or behind some ornaments or uh, anything like that. It's important to first test the TDS reading to ensure that it's not above 500 for successful use of this equipment. In my case, we test the TDS at 270 TDS, so we're fine to operate the Chihiros Doctor within this fish tank. 
Operation of the Chihiras Doctor is simple. To turn it on, you want to long press, and it will show you two pieces of information. The first of all is the aquarium size. You just soft press to select which size aquarium you have. For me, this is a less than 60 litre aquarium, so we're gonna choose the first setting. When it's spinning, that means the unit is operational. The second piece of information we have here is what it says up the top. If you're struggling to make that out, it's got a little symbol of a plant and the word plant. To change this, you long press again from plants to fish to shrimp to off. Plant is gonna target algal spores. Fish is gonna target uh, fish, fish related uh, virus spores and shrimp is going to target shrimp related disease spores in theory. Once all this is done, we're, we're able to just allow the unit to run for approximately an hour before turning it off. During operation, it won't be uncommon to notice that the unit goes on and off. This isn't uh, something to be concerned about and it's actually how the unit operates. Keep in mind though that you do not want to just keep it on all the time. So don't leave the unit on 24 seven. It's best done just sort of turning it on for at most an hour per day. People have reported catastrophic results by leaving it on all the time. So um, best practice is limit it to an hour per day. As is usually the case, the Chihiros Doctor isn't an all-in-one solution and it's still recommended to do regular aquarium maintenance to limit algae and other pollutants in your water. So there you go guys, that concludes my video on the unboxing setup, uh, background to and usage of the Chihiros Doctor. Hopefully you found this to be an interesting video. I'm keen to see the results uh, progress in due course. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe, and all that fun stuff. If you've got any further questions, be sure to drop them down below. Other than that guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day.